Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of my favorite tips to constructing or to learning proper anatomy. I know that the title is very clickbaity. I know I don't usually do that, but believe me, I'm not going to like I'm not going to uh, defraud you or I'm not going to let you down. I'm actually going to be sharing with you some very very important tricks. So this is a picture I got from the internet. It's one of the pictures that we normally use for like uh, gesture drawing and stuff. And here we're going to be uh, like annotating all of the important tips that we need to understand about anatomy before we even start sculpting it, which is the interesting thing. This is going to be a, a theory heavy video, but I'm sure you guys are going to are going to like it. So the first thing that we need to understand about every single muscle in the body is that the muscles need the bones. OK, so we need bones in our human body to attach the muscles to. If we don't have a bone, then it doesn't matter how many muscles we have things are not going to be working. So bones are super, super essential. They bring the structural thing to our characters. Therefore, it is important to know where the main bones are. For instance, of course, we know that on the top here, we're going to have the skulls of our characters, right? Then we have our rib cage right here. Very, very clear on this character right here. We got, for instance, the clavicles going from the center of the body towards the arms. Then we have things such as the humerus and then the ulna and the radius on the arm. Knowing the names of the bones, even though it's not super, super important, you can refer to them as like the upper arm, lower arm. It will let you understand things more. And this is one thing that I was taught when I was a, a student. It's very important for us as, as artists to understand what we do. We don't want to do this just by repetition or just by following the, the motion. We actually want to know why we're doing the things that we're doing, and that's going to give us a way better result than just repeating steps, okay? So we need bones for this to happen, and bones will grant us two things. They will grant us an origin and an insertion. Every single muscle that we have will have an origin and it will have an insertion. The origin is where the muscle starts and the insertion is where it finishes. So the important thing about this is understanding that for a muscle to properly do its work, and this is tip number two, a muscle will always contract, okay? The function of a muscle is to contract. So we need to cross, okay, in order for this contract contraction to work, we need to cross a an articulation. Imagine if we have a muscle on this like fake bone right here, and the muscle was right here and its origin was right there and its insertion was right here. It doesn't matter how, how strong you like bend or, or flex this muscle. It will never, never move anything because as you can see, the insertion point and the origin or both of them are in the exact same place. OK, so we want every single muscle to at least cross one articulation so that when we bend this or when we contract this muscle, the, the tendon that we have right here, pulls the bone that's attached to closer to the muscle, okay? So these are, I know, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit too much information for, for this first couple of minutes, but, but bear with me. So every single muscle that we have will have an origin point and it will have an insertion. The origin and the insertion will always be in bones. Just a little asterisk here. We've got like two or three like muscles in the body that do not have an insertion point. They just have an origin, um, such as the tongue, for instance. The tongue is a muscle that does not have an insertion point because it just ends like in the mouth. So, so not all of them, but I would say like 99% of, of the muscles will have an insertion point. So every single muscle will have an origin and an insertion point, and then every single muscle needs to cross an articulation in order for it to do its function. What's its function? To contract. Otherwise, muscles are not going to work. Now, let's talk about like one of the easiest muscles to, to remember, uh, the pectoral muscle, right? The pectoral muscle has its origin right here on the sternum, on a little bit of the clavicle, and on a couple of the ribs down here. So all of this green area that I just painted, this is the origin of the pectoral muscle. And here's one important fact about the origin. I'm going to do another like little star right here. The origin is going to be closest to the middle line, okay? To the middle line of the body. Every time you refer to the origin of a muscle, it's going to be the point that it's closest to the center. So for instance, in the case of the bicep that we have right here, its origin is going to be up here and its insertion is going to be down here. Origins will always be closest or the closest that we can to the center of the body. So this green point right here that we have for the um, pectoral muscle, it's its origin. Where is the insertion of the pectoral muscle? On the arm. It looks a little bit weird, but actually it, like inserts itself all the way over here, probably a little bit higher, but all the way onto the humerus. It goes across the articulation that we have here on the shoulder and it allows to bring our arm back. So when we do this movement right here, 
that's when we're using our pectoral muscles to bring everything closer to us to protect ourselves. So the pectoral muscles, when it contracts, it does this, right? It brings the arms closer to us. So if we were to do some lines right here, you will see that the pectoral muscle has fibers that are going to go in this direction, and they're going to insert themselves at that point that I'm mentioning for the arm. Now, of course, in order to learn like the proper anatomy for each specific muscle, it is important that you have an anatomy book so that you know where the origin and the insertion of each of the muscles that we're using uh, is going to be. Now, you don't need to learn that human has over 600 muscles. We as humans have over 600 muscles in our body. You don't need to learn all of those. There's a lot of like internal muscles that we don't use. I would say it's about like 30, 40, maybe 50 muscles that you need to learn. And once you start learning them, you're going to see that it's very intuitive where the insertions and the origins are going to be because they're usually a little bit after the articulation that they're working with. So in this case, the, um, the insertion point for the pectoral, as you can see, is right here. Now, something really interesting happens with the origin and the insertion. The muscle is made out of three main things. The muscle mass, which is all of the, the bundle fibers of our element, and then the tendon, okay? Now, if you take a look at this little diagram that I'm drawing right here, you're going to see something. Some of you with sharp eyes might be able to tell that the tendon that we have going from the origin and the tendon that we have going towards the insertion are slightly different in size. This is because, again, most of the time, the tendon that is closest to the origin is going to be really short because that's where we want all of the strength, all of the tension, because we're pulling from that point. And the tendon that's going to the insertion is going to go a lot, uh, like a longer way. And you can see that very easily here in the arms. You're going to see that on the arms, most of the muscle mass is here. And all of these things that we have right here, it's tendons, all tendons for all of the fingers that we have in our hands. It happens in our hands. It happens in our lower legs. It happens in the pectoral muscle. Like most of the mass is going to be right here. And it becomes a slimmer as it goes towards the arm. It happens with the deltoid, for instance. We have this very cool teardrop shape right here a lot of mass, and then it goes into like a little point as it goes towards its insertion, which is right here on the humerus. So most of the muscles will have this sort of like teardrop shape going from a big mass to a smaller volume as they go into their final tendon. I always like to think about like a drumstick, uh, like a chicken drumstick, to remind myself that this is how we do muscles. Now, this little bit of information is important because if you're designing monsters and you're like inventing anatomy, this are one of the, the like all of this are principles that we can use to generate those sort of things. Okay. Now, let's go with point number three. Or actually, we got already a couple of ones. So we need bones, we have origins and insertions, we contract and we go across articulation. The next one that we have right here is that muscles will always have skin, fat, vessels, and something called a fascia, okay? The fascia is a, a connective tissue that surrounds the muscle, and you've probably seen it. If you've done like a barbecue or something on, on your... Um, uh, with your family or whatever, you will see sometimes when you buy the certain cuts of meat that they have a, a thin film of protective tissue. It's like a semi-transparent tissue. And the reason why all of this is important is because as you can see, even though we're learning all of the anatomy of how each of the muscles is, is seen, we're not actually seeing the, um, the intricacy of all of the fibers of the muscle. You need to be really, really, really dehydrated to really see and, um, and and visualize all of those fibers. So the example I like to use with this is the fairy tale about the princess and the and the pea. Whereas this there's this pea, and then we have a lot of like uh, like bed sheets I think or cushions or something. And then a princess stands at the very top of it, and she will feel a little bit of the bumpiness that this pea is causing. So this pea represents the um, the muscles. And on top of these muscles, we're going to have skin, fat, vessels, and fascia. So one of the advices that I will always give, especially in ZBrush, is to go over the muscles with a little bit of clay buildup or clay brush just to soften up all of the anatomy that we're doing, okay? Now, the next uh, advice that I want to give you is the interlinking of muscles, okay? And I think this is the final one because there's a, a lot of information on, on this first one. So muscles will often interlink between each other to weave a sort of like net of connective tissue and muscle muscle power in our body to generate what we want. I'm going to I'm going to give you a very very great example here on the arm. So let's grab another color right here. This right here, oh, this right here is of course our bicep muscle, which we're going to see right around here. And the bicep muscle has its tendon, its uh its insertion tendon going all the way to the forearm like this, kind of crosses around and goes into the forearm like this. And then on top of this, we're going to have this muscle here, 
the brachial radialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus that will weave, as you can see, they follow sort of like the same line of the tendon. They weave themselves and create the next sort of elements that we have right here going towards the wrist. On the other side, we have the flexors. They're going to also weave another net right here. And you can see how this flows very, very, very nicely. Very similarly, something happens here up in the shoulder. We're going to have this teardrop shape weaving itself in between the bicep and the tricep. If we see the bicep and the tricep from a side view, you're usually going to see the bicep like this. And then the tricep is going to be like back here. Well, actually, let me grab another color. So the tricep is going to be like right here. And the teardrop shape of the deltoid is going to be falling in between those elements right there. We actually have another muscle right here called the brachialis. By the way, if you guys uh, want to learn a lot about this anatomy things, I do cover this on the advanced character uh, course, and you can check that one in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So oh, there we go. So these are the four secrets that you need to know about muscles. You need bones. You need to know where the bones are so that we can find the origins and the recessions. We need to use the information that we just mentioned about where, uh, like how and, and where muscles create the volume. We need to understand that they contract and therefore we need to cross an articulation. And we need to understand that there's going to be skin, fat, vessels, and fascia that are going to contribute to the overall surface that we're going to be seeing from the muscle. Finally, we need to understand that they will interlink between each other and they will create some really important uh, things. So let's put all of this into practice and let's learn about one muscle. Let's say we want to learn about the quad muscle, which is a really, really important muscle here on the leg. So if we go online and we look for um, the quad muscle, we're going to learn that it originates, it starts on the anterior posterior iliac spine and also on the inferior uh Inferior anterior iliac spine, sorry. So on the little iliac spines that we get here from the pelvis, which is one of the bones, they start right here. And we're going to have our quad going all the way until we hit the knee. And then the four heads of the quadriceps, it's called the quadricep because it has four heads, will all combine together and they will create a super big tendon that will attach itself to the knee and all the way down to the leg. So the insertion point is going to go all the way down to this lower part of the tibia because it combines itself with all of the tendons that go into the knee. So we, with this, we fulfill the two things that we're talking about. We need the bones. Which bones? Well, we need the pelvis, the femur, and of course, the tibia down here. We already are going through an articulation. We're, we're contracting. So the articulation that we're going um, through is the knee articulation. And what's going to happen? Well, when the muscle contracts, we are going to be bringing the leg forward. So when we kick something, we contract our quads really, really strongly so that we can do the kick, right? So from this position, we contract the quads and they do this, okay? That's the movement. When we bring the leg down, we're actually activating the muscles on the back. Actually, that's another, that's the fifth tip that I forgot. Fifth tip, there is always a counterbalance for a muscle, okay? So muscles work in a counterbalance sort of way. So for every muscle that does an action, there is, again, usually, most of the time, going to be another muscle that does the opposite action. So in this case, the quad muscles brings the leg forward like this, and then the biceps femoris and some of the muscles on the back of the leg, I believe it's the semitendinous and semimembranous, some of them will bring the leg back. So when you're preparing to kick like a soccer ball, you will first engage all of the muscles on the back of the leg to do this movement, and then you will engage all of the muscles on the front of the leg to kick the ball, okay? Once we have that... Once we have that, once we understand where the muscle is, the next thing, and this is the final thing, is we need to understand that there's going to be volume. So when I'm struggling with like understanding an, a piece of anatomy or a concept or something, I like to do this form sections or form lines so that I understand where the shadow is. You can see like a plane right here. So that tells me that this muscle is doing a, this sort of shape. Okay, it's because I see the highlight right here. I see a shadow right here. And I see another highlight right here. So if we just follow the lights and the shadows... Lights and shadows are a really quick way to understand the form of an object. You can see that this is like the simplified, block-out version of the effect. Of course, this eventually we're going to 
we're gonna round these muscles off a lot more to get a, a nicer approach and a nicer generation. Some things that you will learn, again, as soon as you start analyzing each individual muscle is, for instance, that the quadricep is made out of four uh, heads. The fourth head we actually don't see, but we're going to see one head right here, again, sort of like the teardrop shape. There's going to be another head right here. There's going to be a final head right around here. So these three heads are on top of the fourth head, and together, all of these three heads will create this super intense tendon that's going to go on top of the knee, and it's going to insert itself all the way down into the tibia. And that, my friends, is how you learn anatomy. That's how you can study the muscles. That's how you can do your research to properly understand where the muscles are coming from, where they're going, what is their function, how are they going to help my character. And after this, after doing this like theory analysis, after understanding, properly understanding how things work, we can jump in and go into the, um, what's the word, into the sculpting inside of ZBrush Mar or whatever software you're using. So hopefully this little bit of information is useful to you, my friends. If you want to learn a little bit more about anatomy, I do have several courses where I cover characters. And in every single course, we go over ba the basics of anatomy. I'm really thinking about doing a full anatomy course, like going like full theory similar to this with every single part of the body. Let me know if that's something that you guys would like. I would love to know in the comments because uh, we could be doing that in the next couple of months. Now, uh, a couple of announcements before we, we leave. Uh, I appreciate if you stick around to just listen to them. First of all, this is actually quite, quite fun and important for me. As some of you guys know, I'm a huge fan of D&D &D and role-playing games. And uh, recently, after the, the whole thing that happened with D&D &D, uh, earlier this year, my party and me, we switched to uh, Pathfinder, which is like the competition to Dungeons and Dragons. It's again, it's a fantasy role-playing game, but it's being uh, done by Paizo. And I contacted Paiso earlier this year, and I got myself a spot to be a presenter at PaisoCon 2023. So I'm going to be doing some uh, live workshops where I'm going to be teaching how to make 3D figures for um, for games, for like 3D printing. So if you guys want to get uh, into this, you can. I think there's still spots available, but I'm going to be streaming this. So we will have two big live streams this weekend, one on Saturday, or what actually it's going to be. It's going to be Saturday really late for me, which is going to be Sunday really early for most of you guys. And then the other one's going to be Sunday really early, which is going to be Sunday late for you guys. So there's going to be like a double double Sunday stream for, for you, my friends. Uh, we're going to be working on some cool stuff. So actually, we're going to be doing this character right here, this little, uh, it's called the, the Vigilant. And uh, yeah, so that's the first new. Second new, we still have um, the art support nexus. So if there's anything you guys are struggling with, make sure to submit there. The information is on the description. You can just drop any file, any sculpting, any animation or whatever you need help, and I'll be happy to review it. We also have our Discord channel available where you can uh, just hang out, ask questions, send your portfolio and all that stuff. Portfolio review is also open, and I believe that's pretty much it. We got several surprises coming in the next couple of weeks. A lot of courses are in the making. Uh, we're going to be releasing them very, very, very soon. So stay tuned. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.